Welcome back, everybody. Today, what we're going to be looking at is in the LAB color space, what can we do with an image uh, of nature that is mostly green? Okay, first thing we're going to do is convert out of RGB into LAB by going to Edit, Convert to Profile, LAB, and LAB also with the dither off. When you have the dither on, what it does is add tiny bits of noise to your image uh, to try to prevent banding and those kind of artifacts. It's supposedly an amount of noise that is just unnoticeable in your image, but we will be going from RGB to LAB and then eventually LAB back to RGB. And if I'm going to do any additional tiny little sharpening back in RGB, it may exacerbate the noise. So I like to have this off anyway. Now we're in the LAB color space. The next thing we're going to do is bring up a Curves dialog box, which will be right there. Now let's take a look at this image and let's take a look at it by the numbers a little bit. The first thing I want to do is see what the range is in lightness in this image. So as I hover around the image with my cursor, I'm going to get readouts of numbers here. So as I call out numbers, this is where we should be looking is on this info panel to see the lightness, the channel A and the channel B numbers. First thing I want to do, let's come along and look at the lightness. Now, if you remember, uh, the brightest of the brights goes up to 100 and the blackest of the blacks is zero. Now my brightest is going to be around here somewhere and I'm hitting about 71 there, I'm hitting about 57 in there. I'm just going to go around a little bit, see what the highest value is I could get. There's a 70, there's a 72 I saw, maybe in here. I saw an 80 something in there, 81 I saw in there. That's going to be the brightest part of my image. And that's not quite great. So what I want to do is I want to set my white point. Now what I have done is a double click on this icon and my white point I have set at 97 in LAB. You should go ahead and do that. Do a double click, type in 97, and then when you just say OK, it will save it as the default. We don't want to go all the way to a blocked out total white white in the whites. We don't want to get all the way there. 97 is okay. So let's come back to our spot. Try to find that. There's, I saw an 82 in there somewhere. Ooh, it's going to be hard to find. Anyway, if I can find my 81, I'll be happy. There it is. And click. Okay. Good. Now I want to set the black point. Now the blacks are going to be in here somewhere. There's a, there's a, uh, well, there's a nine right now. I've set the white point already. And so that has brought up the darkest of the darks. And I've got a value of nine in there. I've got a value of 10 as the darkest, a value of 11. That might be a little bit light. I've got some blacks right up in here, 16, 11. I think the blackest of the black are gonna be right down here. And I've got about a 10 right in there. Now for the black point, I wanna set that, do a double click Black point I've got set at six. Please go ahead and change that uh, on your settings and then click OK. We don't want a zero for black because again, that's going to be just a completely plugged black with totally no detail possible whatsoever and we don't want that either. So let's go back here. I'm looking at my numbers again. I've got tens down here. What I found a nine, didn't I? There's a nine. That's pretty close to the setting I want, pretty close, but I'm going to go ahead and click it anyway. And good, bring that down. The overall image itself uh, I found to be too dark anyway. So now the overall image has gotten a lot brighter. I like it a lot better. Although when it comes to something like lightness and brightness and contrast in images, it really is in the eye of the beholder. And you may not have liked that change at all, but I thought it was a little bit too dark but maybe for some other uses, other expressions that you're trying to make in your image, maybe that isn't too dark. In any way, here we go for the lightness change. I'm going to come back to this, I'm pretty sure, and put in a little S curve to maybe make the contrast a little more, but maybe not, that doesn't look too bad. Now, the only other thing I would like to look at in this image is the separation of color. 
Um, human eyes are exquisite in seeing differences, very small differences in color. Cameras, not so much. They're not nearly as good as eyes are in seeing minor, minor differences in color. So when a camera takes a picture like this with the greens, most of the greens tend to be about the same color of green. There's not much separation between them. And this is what LAB is absolutely fantastic at, is bringing out these differences in color to make it more realistic according to what human beings would see. Let's come over this image a little bit and take a look at some areas here. I want to come over and take a look at this area right here. Take a look at the numbers now. And I'm getting numbers of, and I only want to look in the A and B channel, um, I am getting a 13 and a 21. Um, and it's a minus 13 also. And 21. In the A channel, the minus 13 tells you it's pulling towards green. And in the B channel, it tells you it's pulling towards yellow because it is a, um, a uh, positive number, plus 21, which is right. All greens should be a mixture of green and yellow, and they are. Uh, this one pulls pretty strongly into the yellow, and as you can see, it is kind of yellow. Now, I want to look at a totally different type of green, and I'm going to come all the way over here to this dark leaf over here. And what am I getting here? Minus 9 and 2. So quite different. However, it still pulls a little bit minus into the green and a tiny bit yellow, almost imperceptibly, uh, into the blue with a positive 2. Okay, let's make some changes here and see if we can separate these colors and get them, uh, pull them apart a little bit. In the A channel, I'm going to take this and I'm going to come across. I'm just going to try one division per each. And I'm going to do the same thing in B, and I want to just take a look and see what happens. Come along here, do one. I'm pulling it down to the right, which means it's going to make it a little bit more yellow, but then I'm pulling it this one back up, which is going to come back and cross the center line exactly in the center. And if I could just get that on 90, there we go. It's going to cross right in the center. Okay, I'm seeing a much better separation of color here. Let's go back to our two spots and see what we got now. Now in this spot, and I'm roughly in the same area, uh, what have I got now? I've got um, minus 16 and 27. We've got, yeah, minus 16 and 27. I'm writing these numbers down for a little uh, bit because what I want to look at now in the A, right, and the, and the B, minus 16, minus 27. Now I want to come over here to the other one also, and what am I getting here? I'm getting minus 10 and 2. What this tells you is that we can mathematically show now that we've got a greater separation of colors. Our eyes are telling us that. I see a greater variety of greens in the image, but I also see um, in the beginning there was a difference of 4 in the A channel in the two different places. So if I looked only at the A channel from this spot over to this spot, there was a difference of four from 13 to nine. And in the B channel from here to here, there was a difference of 19. Now, after our changes in the A channel from here to here, there's a difference of 26 from 16 to minus 10. And in the B channel, the difference now between here and here is 25. So these are good. These are, these, are, these are good. These are good numbers. Your eyes, what you are seeing in the image proves it to you. And the LIB numbers also confirm uh, that we have done a pretty good job, very good job, in fact, of making these colors better separating the colors, making a difference in the colors. I'm not sure that I'm going to play around with this uh, contrast in here anymore. I think we're getting a very nice contrast in the sharpest part of the image, which is right here. 
and I'm not even sure that I would go back and change the sharpness of this image. I think uh, this tutorial is just about how to separate colors in nature shots that are almost entirely green. And, and again, it's something the cameras have a problem with, is picking up these slight differences in color that human eyes can see. That's about it. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.